Hey everyone, my name is Matt. Welcome to my backyard and welcome back to my build series I'm doing on this big bandsaw <laughs> mill. <laughs> in the last video, I know I said that in this video we'll be painting this frame. So the next video, we'll go ahead and get the whole frame here painted. But um, I have James here from the Wood by Right channel. Addy. He is going to be helping me for a few days. So I figure I don't really need a whole lot of help painting. <laughs> Um, I could use some help making this carriage. So in this video, we're gonna go ahead and get started on the carriage for this whole mill. So back in the introduction video, this is the plan for the carriage that I showed. And what we're gonna be making today is based on this whole thing here. When we design this here, this is more just to figure out the whole dimension of things, just to get an idea of the scale of everything. So the, the idea is gonna be pretty much the same, but let's take a look at one of these side assemblies first. So the basic structure of the side assembly is going to remain the same. There'll still be two uprights. These are all going to be out of three by three uh, rectangular tubing. So you have two uprights. There's a cross beam along the bottom, and there'll be a cross beam along the top. But what I'm going to add here in the center somewhere, I guess still have to figure out exactly where, is a vertical connecting beam. And this is going to carry the linear bearing that's going to guide the saw head up and down. I decided to use a linear bearing here because someone is gifting me one, so I'll be using that. But the original plan was to use a piece of either a piece of tube, round tube or square tube that fits inside of another one pretty snugly and have that right up and down. The other way you could do this is to wrap a piece of tubing in a welded frame that has a little bit of slop in it so it does, it does slide up and down pretty easily. But since I have access to these linear, linear bearings, I'll be doing this style. So we're going to get started by attaching the wheels to the upright. These are the wheels I'm going to use that are going to guide the carriage along the track on the frame. And they're going to be bolted through the uprights and then the bolt will come through the wheel and into another plate. And that plate is going to have basically a little housing around it so that the top of the wheel is protected from things falling on it. And that will also provide some additional support for the bolt that's supporting all this weight. There'll be some bearing surface on this side of the wheel as well, and that'll be transferred directly back into the upright. So we needed to make a wheel housing, or basically a fender, to uh, house the wheel on the end of each of these uh, verticals. And so I went through with a circular saw and cut all of these at a 15 degree angle, while Matt went over and uh, drilled out the holes. And so our next step is actually to weld these together with the uh, about a quarter inch offset so that the wheel has enough space to rotate inside of the uh, housing. Just like I did for the runners on the track, I made a template to help locate the hole locations correctly across all the uprights for the bolts that will attach the wheels. The bolt will pass through both sides of the upright, so we'll start by drilling a quarter inch hole through the upright and come back with the hole saw to complete the 7 8 inch hole on both sides. We're also going to drill holes towards the bottom of the upright, so in the future I can run a bolt through here and have it thread into the track, which will allow me to lock the carriage. The 
So now that all the uprights have their holes drilled into them, we can start prepping them for welding and laying them out. Hello. <laughs> so day two, yesterday we got all of the uprights and the frame stuff ready to go. We got one of them welded and we clamped the second one down to the first one. So, yeah. Oh yeah, we also made those little wheel things. So today we're gonna get started by welding the second frame together. Then we'll attach the wheel fender things. <laughs> and then we're gonna see how we're gonna get these things stood up on the track. I predict seeing this thing vertical today. <laughs> it's a good goal. We'll see. To make sure the frame was all square and perfect, we got the first side plumb with a level and braced it in place. Then to make sure the other side was aligned correctly, we checked for square along the base and checked that the width at the top of the frame matched the bottom so we could be sure the two halves were parallel. Once we were happy with the alignment, we could tack a few temporary braces onto the frames to hold them in position. We also clamped stops to the track so the carriage couldn't roll. James lifted the connecting rails into position and I went ahead and started welding them into place.
going down the road. I'm not going to go slow. <laughs> Next we'll get started adding 45 degree braces to both the front and the back corners. James is going to cut these out of some stock with a circular saw, then we'll clamp them into position and then tack and weld them in place. While I weld the braces, James cut and fit the uprights that will hold the linear bearing rail. Those uprights will have to be drilled and tapped, but I don't think we're going to get to that today. So real quick, it's the next day. I wanted to point out one thing we did yesterday that I just didn't film because I was kind of upset when it happened. So we were so excited as we were getting through the whole build that we went to go install the braces and we totally forgot to account for the fact that welding those braces into place, we're going to distort the frame and actually have the whole thing come together like this. And that's exactly what happened. When we got done welding the braces and we removed the temporary uh, the braces that were holding the legs apart, the whole thing came together and actually pinched together on the rail. Now this thing is designed so there is a gap about three quarters of an inch between the rails and this lower member here and that was completely closed and squeezing the rails so you could not move the carriage. It actually clamped itself in place. So to resolve that, uh, James told me a few solutions we could do and luckily he was here to tell me those because I would have been super upset thinking oh no I have to cut apart this whole frame again and weld it back together. So what we did was we ran beads to heat the area on the outside here. You can see them on the outside faces of the uprights. I also ran them up top as well to heat that area, cause some contraction and cause the whole frame to come back out again. So that's what happened. Luckily doing that worked and it actually rolls better now than it did before. Just a little pressure and it's going. So, kind of happy that happened in the long run, but at the time, I was really upset. <laughs> so, let's roll that outro. Wow, this is pretty high. <laughs> so, I think that does it for this one. This is a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> we got the whole carriage frame built, and um, in the future, I guess, I still have to add the uprights so that'll hold the, um, the linear bearing rails, and then we'll get to the um, the saw head, but the frame of the carriage is done thanks to James, <laughs> mostly James. I'll tell you, it is a lot faster having a second person around, especially someone who knows what they're doing. <laughs> I don't know if I know what I'm doing. <laughs> well, maybe you do a little bit. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> so make sure if you haven't checked out James's channel already, you head over there and take a look at that. You can see him doing all kinds of ridiculous things with hand tools, <laughs> things I might never do but I have complete respect for. <laughs> Do you want to say the outro? Uh, Do you know it by now? Uh, I don't remember yours. Do you remember mine? I probably do, I just don't remember how it starts. <laughs> so thanks as always for watching, I greatly appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments about the carriage or anything on the sawmill or anything back in the shop, please feel free to leave me a comment. As always, I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. And until next time, happy woodworking. <laughs> We did it. <laughs> we did it. I don't know if I can get down from there. This is pretty sweet. And if you want a rolling house. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, you, got, you stay up here, I'm gonna roll you. <laughs>